So without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start to step forward into uh, this evening's presentation. So uh, as a risk disclosure, I throw this up here because we are not financial advisors or a broker dealer. Okay. The reason I mention that is I spent the previous 15 years of my career as both a financial advisor and a broker dealer. A um, little bit about me. Uh, again, if you've never tuned into any of the presentations that we've done here at Theo Trade, you're in store for some fun tonight. Um, in terms of an hour presentation, we'll be right about an hour tonight. Again, everything's recorded here. I have packed a tremendous amount into not only the slide deck, but some live examples here and put a huge amount of work into these presentations. Um, Co-founder here at Theo Trade. Again, I spent uh, the previous uh, 15 years of my career with both Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade. I was invited to, uh, to join what was a, a very uh, not well-known startup back in 2000, 2001 timeframe. Uh, I resided there running the education division of Thinkorswim. I went on to run an institutional education division of TD Ameritrade. Then I actually ran uh, the education division of TD Ameritrade and their 7 million clients. And one of the things that I often talk about is I had access to 7 million client accounts. And uh, you learn a tremendous amount about trading, not only because I traded myself and I started trading in Chicago in the late 90s and, uh, of course, worked amongst uh, many market makers for pretty much my entire career. I mean, that's what Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade was comprised of. But uh, more importantly, I learned a huge amount from, well, your experiences and looking at retail accounts. It is quite insightful. So, you know, again, I've done a bunch of different media appearances over there. One of my uh, more notable ones, again, I always like this saying, you know, trading is not about, about being right or wrong. However, when you are going up against Mr. Wonderful, all right, I'm right and he's most definitely wrong. And uh, I mentioned that because Apple was trading substantially higher okay, at that time of the interview than it currently is. And if you missed it today, well, Apple released a new phone. It's called an iPhone 7. What did it have? A camera, <gasps> two cameras, and a watch. It's like a watch, except it can go in the water. I mean, again, being a little facetious with that, but uh, again, I was kind of an avid short seller of Apple for quite a substantial period of time. Anyway, on CNBC out there, and it's uh, one of the more notable calls over here, and we're going to discuss you know, more notable calls as we come uh, across this tonight. So as I get started over here, I like to uh, first talk about, speaking of Apple, first talk about risk and success. And really, in a tremendous number of presentations that I do, I always like to start with what I kind of call the basics. And, you know, everybody has tendency to focus often on what I would say some of the wrong details of the market. And one of those details happens to be what's going to be next? What's going to be next? Okay. There are three main principles that we live by here at Theo Trade. Number one of those is trade logic. That's not direction of the market. It's trade logic, the right strategy to be employed at the right time. Okay. Number two is your capital allocation. All right. Capital allocation ties perfectly into this. How you handle your risk is going to be directly correlated to your success in the markets. Too much risk and you're going to panic and close positions continuously at the worst possible time. Okay. And then I say, well, at least you're consistent with your panic. So in these three principles, it's trade logic, the right strategy, the right trade, Number two is allocation. Number three is your directional bias. And we're going to be actually looking at each one of these kind of areas of this discipline, all right, as we move forward this evening. Now, as I said, this is about the next big short over here. So here we go. Get ready, because whether you like it or not, it's coming. Undoubtedly, we are about to embark, okay, on what could be one of the most pivotal periods in our market's history. Prediction of that risk is relatively easy, but timing of the onset of this risk is impossible. And again, we're going to be referencing this as we move forward a bit in tonight's presentation. We need to twist that risk in our favor. And I'm going to kind of foreshadow on a strategy that I'm going to be displaying tonight. Uh, again, clearly, 
you know, that strategy is going to be revolving around this idea of the next big short. But tonight we're going to present a strategy whereby we can harness, all right, that potential afforded to us by the current market environment, which is a docile environment, at least in the current moment. Specifically, I'm going to detail for how you can, for really little capital up front, you can risk a buck to potentially make $10 Again, little capital up front. In the next 45 minutes, you're going to see precisely the strategy, the plausible risks, and how you can place these trades. So we're going to get into it. And again, I just want you to know, one of the ideas presented today is going to be around the idea of twisting all of this risk in our favor. Now, whether you believe the markets okay, have a tremendous amount of risk or not, that's not the argument over here. Okay, we're going to present a little bit of a case for that here momentarily, but nevertheless, every individual listening to this tonight, whether you're trying to hedge a 401k, reduce risk of a 401k, reduce risk of an IRA, reduce risk of a portfolio, or some of you simply just want to have like big downside potential in the marketplace, okay, because you do see some of the risks. That's one of the strategies that we're really going to play into tonight. And if you, you have an idea, if you think you know what the strategy is, think again. We're actually going to stretch the imagination a little bit tonight. With that, before we dive detailed into the strategy, it is critically important that we get a handle on the volatility or what I term lack thereof. So volatility in the markets. Have you ever spent time looking at the volatility in the markets and compared that to what you believe the risk to be. Think about that for a second. First, what is volatility and what does it measure? Volatility is most notably its risk in the markets. You know, people get this idea of volatility all oh, twisted around because there's a lot of different types of volatility. But in the end, volatility is equivalent to what? It's risk, okay? Option markets can be thought of as putting a price tag on risk. So I just threw the word options in there. Now. This evening, you may have options experience. You may have never traded an option before, okay? That is a-okay with me, okay? If you have absolutely no experience in options, fantastic. If you have all the experience in the world in options, fantastic. It's neither here nor there. What's important to know is that regardless of what your experience is, the option markets, okay, are to be looked at because they're putting this constant price tag on risk. So pricing in the markets is determined via market participants. Ultimately, option pricing comes down to supply and demand. You know, people always talk about when it comes to options, they make it so complicated. They're like, what, what, what about the Black-Scholes model? I need that. And, and, you know, you've heard all these different models and this crazy stuff. But in the end, it's market participants. If everybody in the world right now wants to buy an option, tell me, okay, let's make this kind of an interactive session tonight. But if everybody in the world right now wants to buy options, where does volatility go? And again, don't think of it as called volatility anymore. Let's just call it what it is, risk, right? Where does it go? It skyrockets, smoking to the upside, right? So think about that for a second, because ultimately all of this pricing nonsense just comes down to supply and demand. Even options are supply and demand. Stocks are supply and demand. Futures are supply and demand. People make this business way more difficult than it needs to be. Listen, in the end, there are buyers and there are sellers, right? Now, we're going to talk about what's termed implied volatility for a moment, okay? Now, there's a couple of different types of volatility. A lot of people are familiar with what's termed historical volatility, or sometimes referred to as realized volatility. What does that mean? It's the annualized standard deviation of the past stock price movement. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Historical volatility, all right, plain and simple. It's telling you, all right, how much the market is moving. Really like how it's measuring movement in the market, but it's based on past movement because movement doesn't have foresight, meaning like if you looked at historical volatility today, actually today's an interesting day. Historical volatility today happens to be the lowest in the S&P 500 ever recorded. 
since the S&P 500 inception. In fact, the Dow today recorded a 100-year low historical volatility. It's crazy, isn't it? All right, then we have what we call implied volatility. It justifies an option's current market price, yada, yada. But here's the cool thing about implied volatility. All right, if you look at this word implied, what does it mean? It means out here in the future. So if you're looking at a chart and the chart's like this, okay, the option market is out here, right? Because the option market's like 30 days out and 60 days out and so forth. Option markets are looking to the future. Now, I'll give you a quick synopsis of this implied volatility. Because so many people, like, they don't, they don't necessarily get it. Now, bear with me on this slide for a second, okay? Let's say that you're looking at some stock. Call the stock, I don't know, you want to call it the Google. You guys ever heard of Google? Somebody has heard of Google. Um, your entire life revolves around Google or Apple. You can't be on this session right now if you're not involved in some way, shape, or form with Apple or Google, right? But you mentioned something like Google. But here, let's just say you have a stock, and the stock's trading it for what? Let's just call it a blanket statement. You have this $100 stock here, okay? So here is $100 stock, and the volatility of that $100 stock is right there. Okay, it's trading for 20%. Now the weird thing is, is like 20%, it's such an esoteric idea. And like 20% 20, 20 of what? Actually, volatility can be correlated into stock price movement. So when it's saying is 20%, it's 20% of what? Of 100. Okay, kind of means that that stock can move up about what? Up 20 or down 20. So in the end, Forget what you think about that number, the 20%. Oh, that's high. Oh, that's low. Don't worry about that. 20%. The important thing to know is that 20% does correlate to stock price movement. It kind of says it can move up 20 bucks or down 20 bucks. Now, is that always going to be right? No. That's going to be right about 68% of the time. Or, and you're like, where, where did we pull that 68% from? Man, he's throwing numbers at me. The 68% of the time is what we term a standard deviation. What's gonna happen to me the other 32% of the time? Oh, don't worry, you'll find out, right? You can move huge, you know, this $100 stock could be worth five bucks. You know, it could be the next Enron out there. Need I mention that? There's a lot of stocks that have gone bankrupt over the years. But with this, this number, this is such a critically important number that most people just don't pay attention to. And the reason they don't pay attention to it because they, they just simply don't understand the 20%. But what it's telling you is what that risk is in that particular underlying at that moment in time. But that risk is always annualized, okay? Now bear with me for just a second. One of the coolest things about understanding implied volatility one of the coolest things about understanding that implied volatility is this. You can, once you understand implied volatility is standard, you can compare one underlying to another instantaneously in terms of risk. Got me? You guys tell me. Give me two different stocks. Seriously, type in two different stocks and let's compare the volatility of two different stocks. It doesn't have to be in the same sector. It can be anything you want it to be. All right, so here we go. I'm cruising over to the Thicker Swim Trading application, and uh, I like it. I like it. So one of the first things that came up, all right, was Walmart. The very first stock, literally, that came up was somebody said like Exxon Mobil, Walmart. But bear with me, Walmart, perfect, perfect example. On the right-hand side of the screen, and any good trading application should have this. But on the right-hand side of the screen, they have implied vol which kind of tells you what the risk is, right? So a moment ago, we we're talking about this 20% volatility, but now we're talking about 16 vol, because that's what Walmart is. Now, is Walmart volatility, you guys tell me, would you consider that high or low? Let's just call this what it really is, all right? Let's call it a standardized 16%, uh, right? Because, you know, this one's 16, this one's 16, that's 17, but let's call it about 16%. Is that high or low, okay? low, a couple of lows, couple of lows, a whole lot of lows to play around with there, all right? It's Walmart. It's like the most boring company on the face of the planet. 
it's Walmart. It ain't going anywhere anytime soon, you know? But then let's go compare it to something like Google, all right? What is Google? What is it? Implied volatility. I do the same thing. Go out a little bit in time over here. What do you got? 11 percent, 13 percent, 14 and a half, 14, 15. Oh, there's a 16. Okay, this becomes earnings, so we'll exclude that one for a moment. But wait a second. What? 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 Do you realize that right now, okay, in the marketplace, how can anybody in their right mind compare? Google to Walmart in terms of risk. You're seeing live screen right now. Google's risk is not only comparable to Walmart, it's actually very slightly lower than Walmart. You want to see some crazier stuff out there? Look at other retailers. Okay, bring up Costco. I know it well. It's almost a 20% volatility. Eh, maybe they have earnings coming out over here. What other stocks you want to bring up? Somebody mentioned GE. GE, over 15 to almost 18% volatility. Yeah, you know what? GE's volatility, let's compare it to another marquee underlying. Let's compare it to Apple. Well, Apple's just a, a shade higher out there. You have to think about what's going on in this marketplace, okay? Bear with me for a second as I show you the entire tech world, which is the Qs. The NASDAQ 100, okay, generally speaking, 30 days out is sitting at a 13 vol. 13% volatility. But Walmart and other retailers and crazy stuff is even higher than that. We live in a pretty peculiar time that prices risk in Walmart higher than it is in a major technology underlying like Google, which is known over the years for volatility. It's something to think about. It's what I call no fear or loathing on Wall Street. The degree of complacency in the markets, considering the myriad of tail risks on the horizon, is truly remarkable. Now we're looking at the VIX. Now, I'm not a huge proponent of the VIX. It's neither here nor there. The VIX is the overall S&P 500 volatility index. Neither here nor there. I'm just talking about overall. When you see a stock and, and it starts to resonate with you that, you know, again, somebody had mentioned Facebook in here. Like, all right, I you know, want to pull up Facebook, which has had an unbelievable breakout move over the last couple of days. It's sitting at lower than 20% volatility. You have to start to shake your head. Okay. And that's what I call no fear and loathing on Wall Street. The issues. There are some issues ahead. Yeah, we got a couple of issues with you people, right? So what are some of the issues over here? Now, this is where things are going to start to get crazy. Here is what we call the looming risks. The FOMC and central bankers interest rate policy. I don't need to go too deeply into that, but... What I'm trying to show you is specifically what I was referencing, okay, in this previous slide is that there's a myriad of tail risks on the horizon. Well, here's those tail risks. And tail risk is just basically risks that are outside that normal deviation, outside, if you will, this perfect distribution curve, right? So... FOMC and central bankers. And again, I'm not here to debate any, you know, political in anything in any way, shape or form. I'm just here to present what the risks are. Central banks buying corporate debt and ETFs. By the way, okay, this is not just mentioned in the U.S. The central banks actually reference in this particular statement of corporate debt mentions the ECB. That's Mario Draghi. They're buying corporate debt, which allows companies to go out and think about this for a second. That allows companies to go out and have a debt offering. They can offer a billion dollars of debt. The ECB will absorb the debt. It's They owe next to zero interest rate on the debt. Why? Because the ECB is buying the debt. They're buying up the debt to support the companies. What does it allow for? It allows the companies to be completely and utterly reckless with the capital. Probably go out there and just buy back their own stock. Now, let's have a fun one. ETFs. The Japanese... Okay, uh, the Japanese 
Bank, which is Bank of Japan over there, they're going to be the most interesting policy this entire month. People are worried about what the Fed here is going to do. Forget the Fed. September 21st, Bank of Japan meets. They've been buying their own ETFs. You do realize that the largest player inside of the Japanese market is the Japanese Central Bank. There's a presidential race followed by a change of administration. You got to love that one because everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, additionally, there's $11 trillion of negative yielding debt. Negative interest rate policy. Chinese debt is now at 270% of GDP. The Chinese banking system has also grown at 1,000% in 10 years. That does not include their shadow banking. Think about that one for a second. I pick on the Chinese debt for a second only because it's the one of the, I would say, the largest, the single largest risk in this list over here. Forget about the presidential election. Forget about negative yielding debt. The Chinese banking system has grown a thousand percent, but the shadow banking system out there may have grown tenfold beyond that. Sure, there's 1.3 student loan debt, 42 percent delinquent rate. Again, forget it. Brexit. Okay, we haven't seen the full myriad of risks there, and global currency devaluations. Now, why do I mention this? The currency war is on. All right. The reason I mentioned the currency devaluations, it was actually China on August 24th of 2015. China devalued the yuan in an overnight trade that actually crushed our markets. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I had to throw it in there, WikiLeaks. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just wait till the end of October because the founder of WikiLeaks has promised that he himself okay, is going to influence the presidential election. And that one's going to be fun. By the way, this is a correction. There's not the looming risks. They're all current events. These, every one of these is a true current event that is going on right now. I haven't even talked about, really, what the actual tail risks that are unforeseen. These are all relative to what's going on right here, right now. Looming risks? No, current events. With that, suppression of risk. Yeah, let's blame somebody. The FOMC, the Federal Market Open Committee, a.k.a. the Fed, step in on the market and suppression of risk. Now, here's where things are going to get really, really interesting. The central banks produce volatility suppression. Now, I, just bear with me for a second because this is where our team here had to do some ridiculous research. Now, I've been in the financial industry for quite some time. Doc Severson, you know, we've actually got Slim Miller on the team. It goes on and on and on. Jeff Bierman joined us, who's a fundamental expert over here. We actually have our group collective writers, which is Heisenberg, okay? They're brilliant in this. And we have looked at the central banks and how they're actually producing what we term volatility suppression. What that means is the volatility we looked at in Google a moment ago, it's extremely low. Now it's being suppressed, okay? Thanks to the central bankers, banks, proprietary trading firms, the hedge funds, anywhere in the world can borrow capital at near zero interest rate. Basically what I'm saying is if you have access, all right, to capital, you're going to take it. And you're going to take as much as you possibly can because the zero interest rate, in effect, makes it viable. The world financial systems are bursting, busting, if you will, with cheap money. In many circumstances, negative interest rate policy is forcing the banks okay, to actually play hot potato with the money. So they lend it out. What do they do? They actually lend it out in swap deals. It's all by design. This is what the FOMC and the central bankers have gotten us into. Now, here's the interesting part. Trillions are seeking returns. A global financial system, it's totally flush with cash and free money, which is it, it really is free money, right? Zero interest rate. It's causing asset managers and traders to seek returns anywhere. They have to put the capital to work. The glut of capital is smashing volatility as market participants are going to throw caution to the wind in search of returns. One way to think about this, okay? Bear with me for a second. One way to think about this, you have a mutual fund, right? If you read your prospectus in that mutual fund, it will say something very specific. It says 95% of capital, okay, to be vested. It doesn't matter what kind of mutual fund you have, 95% of the capital will be put to work. Most hedge funds have very definitive guidelines. 90 to 95% of the capital gets put to work, which ultimately means any inflow that they get, 
What that means is money pouring into the managers. They have to immediately force that capital into the markets. And what we're actually getting right now is money pouring into the financial system is inadvertently suppressing volatility and price discovery. What price discovery ultimately means is, do you really think stocks are efficient right now? They're getting free money to do stock buybacks. How efficient is price discovery, okay, when a firm is having the central bankers are buying their debt? It allows them to be reckless on a broader time frame. This is, we're talking about years. Charts and technicals, they don't matter. Fundamentals are meaningless. Volatility readings, they're totally dead. Deceased out there. And this is just the reality, okay? However, looking at all this, and this is usually like you know, the part in the presentation, everybody's like, all right, um, I'm a little nervous now. You should be. But you should look at this as one thing. This is a huge opportunity. Suppression of risk presents possibly the best opportunity in decades and decades of trading. And a lot of people, I didn't see a weight coming. All right, you didn't see a weight coming. Bear Stearns went up in flames in January, February timeframe. That was in 2008. It wasn't until what? Late August, early September that we actually started the onslaught of volatility in the Lehman Brothers incident. Suppression of risk, we know is there. We know it's relevant. We know that central bankers are forcing capital out there. You have to look at this as an opportunity. But I want to reverberate back to what we talked about earlier. You can't put huge capital on the line right now because you just don't know when the onset of the risk is coming. Risk is good. All of these issues, okay, you got to look at them for what they are. It's your opportunity. You need a strategy whereby you're not going to substantiate inordinate risks, yet you want to position yourself for the onslaught of volatility. And I cannot state that enough. You got to be able to position yourself right now because you're not really sure. And hey, I'm not here to tell you that the proverbial <clears throat> crap is going to hit the fan just yet. We all see the risks because if you don't, they're as transparent as day. Okay. And yet markets can't even move right now 1% in a trading day. In the last seven weeks, we haven't had a 1% move in a trading day. So you better understand that, again, don't substantiate inordinate risks, but position yourself just in case. Now, I want to put it really bluntly. We want to buy volatility. We want to buy volatility, okay, till our hands bleed, as we believe the future market risks are going to be formidable. Even if you don't believe the risks are forthcoming, you still need to accept the relative dangers and mitigate your exposure accordingly. The risks are clear and we can see the opportunity. Yet how do we go about buying volatility? And that's what you really need to ask yourself. Like, all right, yeah, this, this sounds good. You know, let's go out there, let's buy some volatility just, just in case. Yeah, I want volatility. Where do I, where do I get me some volatility? Well, you can buy volatility-based ETF products. It's common knowledge. We can buy volatility products in today's marketplace. However, volatility-based products, okay, they're, to say that they're riddled with failure is an understatement. They're collapsing every single day. Volatility exchange traded funds, exchange. It's a volatility ETF. Let's take a look at two prominent volatility ETFs. The VXX, which is the short-term VIX ETF, and the UVXY the Ultravix short-term ETF. You ready? Because they're hideous. The VXX over the past six months, it's lost 63% of its value. It's not anybody's fault. It's not like volatility is drying up. Okay, This has to do with a term, for those of you that speak geek, it's called contango. It's called contango. And it's crushing the volatility products, all right? At the steepest rate in the history of volatility products are dropping. So the VXX over the past six months has lost 63% of its value. You buy it, you die. The UVXY, it's in a complete and total death spiral. It has lost in six months. You can't even make this up. This is the chart. It's gone from 168 to 17 bucks. I took that screenshot yesterday, all right? Do I need to look at it today? Because it was worse. It's lost just about 90% of its value. By the way, over time, 
this product has lost 99.9998% of its value. It effectively goes to zero. Then what do they do? They restart another product. They've already started new volatility products. You want to flush your money? Go right ahead. Buying volatility ETFs is a fast way to lose money. You're not going to be able to succeed buying volatility outright. You have to be smarter than your competition. And I hope that that statement is relevant for you guys. Like, listen, to be successful in the markets, you don't have to be a ridiculous genius out there. You just, you have to be a little smarter than some of the other retail clients that are going to do something crazy like buy a volatility ETF. It's not a good idea. Positioning your portfolio for a big move. So let's get down to it. This is what I call the down and dirty. And I'm telling you, from here on out, people, this is no holds barred, okay? This is going to get a little bit intense. You guys all right with that? How do you position yourself most effectively for the possibility of an extreme move without exposing yourself to drastic risks? Don't get cute, okay? I don't like to get cute. This is serious. And there are, you know, I put millions up for grabs. I think I'm being facetious with that one. There's billions up for grabs right now, all right? And there are going to be people taking monstrous short positions. They're all doing it. You've heard everybody who's coming out of the woodwork right now, okay? Every major hedge fund manager, all right? Big fund managers, they're all short. They're telling you that they're short, okay? Do you not listen to the people like Soros? I mean, you have to, even though it's one individual, when it's Soros and Carl Icahn, those two hate each other's guts, and yet they agree on one thing, all right? It's getting serious out there. Don't expose yourself to risks. We're actually going to do what's called a risk twist spread. You can employ what's termed a ratio type option spread to an index and equity products known as a risk twist spread. Say that one 10 times fast, okay? I call it a risk twist spread because I am literally going to twist that risk in our favor. The idea, easy. I want to achieve maximum reward for minimal upfront cost. The risk twist spread screams, limit your exposure and maximize your potential. Now I'm going to show you what the risk graph looks like. Huge potential, minimal risks. If you've never seen a risk graph before, allow me for just a brief moment to take you through what in effect you were looking at. Okay, this is a risk graph. It was taken, this screenshot was taken yesterday of one of my live positions on the Thinkorswim trading application. The market is right here, okay? What this basically means, here's the market trading in and around 218, okay? Where can the market go? The market can go up. This would be up 220, 230, 240, 250, 260. Right? The product we're looking at is the SPY. And I want to be totally transparent. I will show you the entire trade. Okay, I don't leave anything to chance here. I want to show you the actual trade, but this is the spiders. If we go up, look how minimal this risk is. This is making $0 right here. So in effect, you lose such a negligible amount of money, it doesn't even show up on the screen. However, if the market craters, the trade explodes. This is, for instance, $2,000, $3,000. In effect, I am actually being extremely conservative with this particular risk graph. Why? Because I didn't take into the impact of what the market volatility is going to do if the market craters. Now, again, to reiterate the stance over here, what's so important about this risk graph is that if we stay utterly flat, we don't really lose very much money. To be very specific, on one contract, okay, we would lose, it's 90 cents, okay, we would lose $90 if we were wrong. 90 bucks, that's it. If we're wrong and the market stays flat, we lose 90 bucks. If the market rallies, we lose 90 bucks. If the market completely and utterly tanks, we can make two, three, four, five thousand dollars It It has a limit because effectively the market can only go to zero, but this is extremely important. Now, is there a huge probability of the market tanking? No, but that's okay. Here's the best part of it. We're only going to place this trade 
Let's say the market doesn't tank this month. Let's say it doesn't tank next month. It's okay. The trade only has to be placed four times per year. That's it. You're going to be risking 90 bucks four times a year. Let me actually show you the trade. Before I show this, I will show characteristics of the spread. I'm going to tell you right now, before you start copying the trade down, okay, there are very detailed pieces of criteria that we're going to start to get into. This is characteristics of the risk twist spread. First of all, it has increase in value of the spread when exposed to heavy volatility. So even if the market doesn't necessarily tank, if volatility picks up with just a mild move in the market, let's say the, the market gets really threatened before the election, volatility explodes, the spread makes money. There's an increase in value when the markets sell off. It's one of the main characteristics. Okay, What else are we looking at doing with this spread? Significant profit potential in a massive downside market move. It doesn't have to be massive. You know, decent sized sell off, you're going to kill it with the spread. Loses minimal capital if the markets rally. Key factor, right? I wanted to make sure we're not going to get crushed. You go out there and just buy puts. E not good. Somebody already asked, can you do this in an IRA? Of course, you could do it in an IRA. More importantly, what happens if you have a 401k? Probably couldn't trade this in a 401k, but couldn't you put one of these things on in your regular account and just hedge, reduce the risk? Hedge is you know, reducing risk, but couldn't you just hedge your 401k with it? Of course, loses minimal capital if the markets continue to drift. That's all we've been seeing lately is boo, drifting. Need only be placed, as I said, this is four times a year because there's a little bit of commissions in there, right? It's the perfect spread to reduce risk of a stock portfolio. I cannot stress that enough. You know, if you're long a $100,000 portfolio, you better consider this. It's an excellent tool. Additionally, let's say you don't have a stock portfolio. Let's say you're sitting with a $3,000 account. It's a great tool for those seeking large returns in a big market event. You know, everybody always asks me, I need a strategy to double my account Listen, most of the time you can't double your account, but with a risk twist spread, you can. You don't necessarily have to be right. Now, let me actually show you just a little bit more of the characteristics of the spread itself. First of all, if it looks convoluted, well, it might be the first time. Listen, this is a minus one contract. This is plus three. This is minus one. I mean, it's easy. It's a customized spread. Any major trading application can do this. The entire trade is done for a 90 cent debit. You know, no trick, no, nothing like that, all right? It's as clear as can be. I will show you one in my account here momentarily. To continue on, building the risk twist spread. You want to build it? Do not let these options intimidate you. The spread below is being done for a 90 cent debit. If you do one contract, this is what we call one contract. This is what we term one unit, okay? One unit will cost you $90 plus, okay? There's going to be a commissions on three different legs of it. It's okay. The commissions, all right? It's, again, your half the battle is just looking at the spread, understanding it. The other half the battle is going to be physically being able to place the spread. However, the spread, I mean, I give you the best analogy. It's kind of akin to a massive chainsaw, and that's what this spread is. Used correctly, can be incredibly effective in creating returns and mitigating your exposure. You realize a day like August 24th comes around, what this spread is going to do, it's going to explode in value. It's going to go from a 90 cent debit to $1,000 of profitability. Used incorrectly though, you may cut off a couple of fingers. And I'm telling you, this is only a one contract trade, all right? That risk graph I showed you, that's one contract. You look at it, you're like, that's ridiculous, okay? Again, fear not the risk twist spread. Now, before I get into this, again, I want you to know, you may not know options or you have limited experience in placing option trades, so we can show you how and when to place the risk twist spreads in a matter of just a couple of hours. What we do is we create detailed recipes, trading recipes for every strategy, including this risk twist spread. Again, it's the same thing as like you wanted to bake a cake, use a recipe. 
All right. You know, so why don't people trade with one? Now, for a moment, I do want to take you to the Thinkorswim trading application. We'll go to the spiders. And again, they're trading at 219, and I don't want you to be intimidated by any stretch of the imagination of this spread. And I'm actually going to reset the entire analyze tab, you know, so that everything is completely and utterly transparent on this trade. And for those of you that do understand the analyze tab, listen, this is a, it's a live trade. It's on, it's a one by three by one, exactly like we showed you in the screenshot over there. And what I want to display to you, okay, is just in a, in a brief moment here, how the trade matures over time, okay? And what you're looking at is that same risk graph. This is the exact same risk graph you looked at. I took a screenshot of my own, again, of my own account. And you can see up until the date here, and I'm going to show you the exact date right here, up until right there, which happens to be October 6th, the maximum sustainable risk is but a hundred dollars. That's it. That's maximum sustainable risk is a hundred dollars. Okay. The next thing I want to show you on here is if the markets were to go down, volatility usually goes up. So let's just move volatility up a little bit and you can see, okay, a relative move in the market instantly a $90 debit becomes a thousand dollar P and L that's today. You move further out in time, the profitability rises up above and beyond it over there. Okay. And for those of you, is there risk in this trade? There is, okay, going to be some risk. Absolute full disclosure here. There's risk, but only for those that held it right until expiration. And we can circumnavigate that risk. And I like to bring up, hey, with great rewards, you are going to have some degree of relevant risk. The ratio in this thing is critical. Where you place these options, critical. That is what we do with the recipes. Okay. I mean, that's really what we get into over here. Estheo trade is about recipes in trading. It's criteria and that's what we do. We build, for instance, step-by-step -step criteria. I mean, trading, it's about answering the what ifs. What might be a good stock or ETF candidate for a risk twist spread, right? Hey, listen, I put one on the spiders, clearly got the spiders, but what happens if you have position risk in something like Apple? Can you do it in Apple? Of course you can cover just that. What is the correct options expiration cycle to buy the twist spread in. Now you just saw me do it in December, but you better know precisely the expiration because the wrong expiration has the wrong amount of volatility risk. How much capital do you commit? Should I do one contract, three contracts? Well, that's going to depend a little bit on your portfolio, but that's a huge discussion over there. What strike price options do I sell and how many? What strike price options do I buy, right? That perfect ratio. Of course, somebody's already asking about, do I do the spiders? Do I do the SPX? SPX, huh? That thing is the widow maker. That is an excellent question. Might save some transaction costs. Theo trade, it's the answer to your questions. You know, what's the right probability for my trade? How many contracts do I trade for my account size? That's your exact question that just came up in the SPX, right? When do I close my risk to a spread? You close it at the wrong time, right here, critical close at the wrong time, you will suffer the wrath, okay, of what we call the valley of death in the risk twist spread. Don't be intimidated because I'll tell you what, what actually causes risk is what also gives us the largest opportunity. What if the stock sells off big? What's the correct return, you know, for the strategy? How do you know when to bail this thing? You have to know, okay, precisely when to get in, when to get out of it, you know, and again, what if the stock rallies massively? Uh, could you actually do one of these to a bullish scenario? Undoubtedly, the answer is yes. You could be bullish right now. Don't let the myriad of risks that I presented intimidate you. Can I fix a losing trade? Well, it only has 90 bucks on it. As I said, okay, 
Theotrade has all your answers. Theotrade is the answers to your trade related questions. We build these recipes with definitive criteria and checklists for each strategy and each unique variable that you can encounter, all right? The how, the when, the why, at what price. This is just the beginning of the many variables you're gonna face while trying to buy a risk twist spread. I like to say this, the secret, well, it's in the sauce. Now, everybody thinks, listen, I showed you the exact ratio. It's a one by three by one. I showed you the strikes I have on right now. Everybody's thinking I can read about these spreads. Well, frankly, you can't really read about the risk twist spread because it was a little bit of imagination and hundreds of hours of work on it. Okay. Think again. Don't go out there and just read about the spread. The following strategy and corresponding criteria requires the utmost attention to detail. Again, we spent months fine tuning this trade, the trade setup and the criteria. Okay. When we approach this in terms of selection, follow the steps. I mean, if you're going to do a recipe, what are you going to do? You're going to skip a couple of steps over there. Uh, oh, I forgot to add flour to that cake over there. How's it going to taste? It just fell apart. Oh, it was flourless. Okay. I forgot the chocolate. You have to follow the steps to be able to build a trade. Would you like the criteria to build a risk to a spread? The next big short. That is the name of a class that we are doing Saturday, September 17th. It's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'll be the trade instructor for it. And we have done a lot of classes here at Theo Trade. Undoubtedly, and hands down, this is the single most important class that we have done to date. If you have risk or you want the shot to the downside, you need to learn how to do this. The class is going to be archived immediately and available indefinitely. All of the entry and exit criteria, the recipe, the checklist is made available immediately. Okay. As a bonus to the class. And yeah, the class, it's 197 bucks. There's $197 for a class. And by the way, the, the site is theotrade.com forward slash twist to sign up for it. Okay. We wanted to make this like an absolute no brainer for people to enter into these spreads. Listen, we are doing this class. Okay. We want you obviously to attend the class, but to really kick in some bonuses here. If you've never had experience with options, we recognize that. So we're including the options 101, what we term the basics and beyond class. It's me. Okay. The options 101 class. It's a five part series. If you've never traded an option, we'll prepare you to trade those options. Also included in this is options 201. Each one of these classes sells on the website, okay, for more than the entire package here. We're doing this to introduce people to Theo Trade and to introduce you to our style of trading and the criteria that drives this. The second bonus here, Options 201, it's vertical spreads and calendar essentials. It's critical to watch this Options 201. I think to fully comprehend the next big short class with the risk twist spreads. Last but not least, and probably my favorite go-to strategy right now, we're actually giving people the in-out spreads class. The in-out spreads class, when I did it, and that class was actually done uh, late March, early April timeframe, that it's, it's the go-to strategy every single day. The risk twist spread Listen, you place it four times a year. You forget about it. When the market tanks one day, you'll be thanking us. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you got to do this high probability in out spreads course. I'm telling you, check this class out. If you've never taken it before, some people have, but if you've never taken it before, it's phenomenal. Okay. We're putting all three of these classes as a bonus with, okay, the risk twist spread class. It's 197 bucks for, for all of it. Okay. And again, it's theotrade.com forward slash twist. Here's some of the curriculum for the twist class. First of all, you're going to learn to construct the risk twist spreads. You're going to learn to build your own 
risk twist spread with all of the entry and exit criteria. You're going to learn how to hedge your portfolio from possible market turmoil. But you're not going to take a lot of risk even if we stay relatively flat, right? You're going to read market risk like never before with specific insights beyond any classes available anywhere. I'm going to give you guys insights to volatility, okay, that handfuls of people are aware of. The only thing right now we see is risk. Learn to profit from that coming onslaught of volatility. What is volatility and how you can profit from changes in it? Well, I already covered some of that tonight. Creating trades based on movement and market volatility, not purely direction of the market. Learn why implied volatility, okay, what it really is and what market instruments, okay, that you can use to take advantage of changes in vol. The trades can be done in retirement accounts with minimal options experience and with smaller accounts looking for large upside potential, okay? That is basically the curriculum, the single most important thing. We go through what the risk twist spread is and all the detailed criteria for that spread. One other offer in here. Again, this is theotrade.com forward slash twist. And I'm going to push this pretty hard right now. Or would you like to access to every single class we have ever done and access to every class that we're going to do for the next year. Now, there's, again, a ton of different education out there. We are here to change that model of the education industry. Theotrade.com forward slash twist. I'll show you in a second. Everything we do for an entire year, every class that we've ever done up until this point, okay, and every class that we're going to do for the next full year, we're doing it all for $997. It's one, it's literally one year of everything we do. Okay. What is one year? I mean, well, first of all, here are some of the, the classes. Surviving the extreme volatility. Iron up. That's iron condors. Selling premium and managing risk. That right there, it's a marquee class. Okay. I'll tell you right now, you will not find that level of education for $1,000 anywhere. And literally, hands down. Other places, they could charge you $1,000 to show up for some indicator. Do you guys know that we give indicators away for free? If you need them, we got them. We also will do the high probability trading in out spreads. We'll do something called covered calls. Ah, there's another class I didn't even put on here. All right. Getting short and selling premium against it. If you don't like covered calls, well, get short, sell premium. There's a weekly options class, options 101, options 201. We do a minimum of one class per month. And I also want to mention, these are classes, people, that I have done. You get access to everybody's class. Who's everybody? Doc Severson. Okay? Doc has done a number of classes. And Doc's doing a class, all right, just after the class I'm going to do. All right, he's going to do a class in September as well. There's no reason not to go to every single class other than it's going to take up some of your time. But if you're the kind of person that's like, hey, you know, I kind of kind of want to know everything, you know, do it. When you take a look, all right, and I'm going to throw up, this is the actual site, theotrade.com forward slash twist. First of all, it's support at theotrade.com. There's our phone number. But I want to show you exactly what's involved with the big short class. When you look down, again, we've gone through some of the key points in here. And again, it's how to build risk twist spreads. But I want to remind you that if you want to check out the $197 class, go for it because it's not just one class. The, the next big short class, again, it includes options 101, options 201, and the high probability, okay? Plain and simple, just the high probability in out spreads class is worth it. And we call it a $150 class. I put my heart and soul into that one, and I really did. All right. Anyway, all three of those classes are included in addition to the next big short class. Then next to it, this is a 12 month mentorship. It's called Total Theo. The reason we call it Total Theo, it has everything we ever do. Literally, when I say everything that we ever do, Here's some of the classes, options 101, options 201, options 301, volatility essentials. Okay, it's about probability and volatility. And again, the web address, because I already see people asking it, and I will answer tons of questions here momentarily. It's theotrade.com forward slash twist. This is everything that we've done, all right, 
right now small account options trading with Doc Severson. So there's one of the Doc classes. If you're interested in small account options trading, good. Okay. The sell premium class, survive and thrive in extreme volatility. Every one of these is a class, covered calls, guide to getting short and collecting income. One of my personal favorites, right? Because it doesn't just talk about how to get short. It talks about candidacy for getting short. Increasing vertical spread probabilities with technical analysis. Another class with Doc Severson. Listen, I'm not the market technician. Somebody asked in the mentorship, do you answer individual questions? Absolutely, right? Collectively here, we answer a few hundred emails a day at Theotrade. But more importantly, you have access to our chat room. I also want to mention, when you get involved at Theotrade, we do trades and we blast those trades out to you okay, via email. So if you want to look over somebody's shoulder, you're looking over my shoulder, you're looking over Doc's shoulder, Jeff Bierman's shoulder, okay, Tony Rago. Yeah, we have a full-time futures guy as well. He's in the chat room every day. Maybe you can't join the chat room every day. That's okay. All of that is gravy. Again, there's nothing that we do that is not included for $997. Nothing for an entire year. And you get the archives of everything we've done, okay, since inception of time. I mean, there are... Right now, well over 1,000 hours of archives on the Theotrade site. In fact, I can even show you the Theotrade site here momentarily. But you can also continue your education with the following classes. We're going to be doing a cash secured puts class, a calendar spread essentials for low volatility, futures trading, hedging and beyond. By the way, one of my, again, personal favorites, I like futures, pairs trading. If you ever had an interest in pairs trading, okay, I'm a quantitative Super Geek, Gamma Explosions, which is pretty much gamma scalping, technical trading, Jeff Bierman, Doc Severson, they're going to go to it. We also have a lot of proprietary technical studies, but I'm going to be frank with you. We just give those things away. Anybody that sells technical indicators is doing it because they don't understand, all right, that number one, you're selling indicators. What's it worth? Literally, what's it worth? Nothing. You give it to people. You have to teach people how to use this stuff. And that's the way I feel about technical indicators. And I hammer that all day long. You want an indicator? Ask us for it. We'll give it to you. Butterflies, market neutral strategy. These are all classes that are going to be coming up in the next 12 months and a lot more. Listen, I just jotted down a couple of things off the top of my head. In addition, on Total Theo, you can continue your education daily following all types of support. There's coaching sessions every single day for a minimum of an hour a day. What a coaching session is, we pick a topic. What's the topic? For instance, probability in trading. It's one of the topics. Great. Uh, the topic today was Ichimoku. If you guys are into Ichimoku, well, Jeff Bierman did Ichimoku. We actually had two coaching sessions today. Uh, I take that back. Doc Severson did a class on designing a retirement account. So really design, portfolio design for a retirement account. Um, we also provide trades in real time, but maybe you work for a living. A lot of people do, so we email them out to you. There's the archives. It's 24-7. It's instant replay, okay? If you need studies or scans, it's all included in the 12 month. Like we're not gonna go, oh, well, this is gonna cost you more. That's crap. Everything from the chat room to the classes to the technical indicators to the archives. Right, you need trade examples, we'll send you email alerts. It's all part of it out there. And again, I feel pretty pretty strongly, obviously, about this stuff, given the fact that, you know, I've been in the education industry, okay? And when I say the education industry, I ran the education for Thinkorswim, ran the education for TD Ameritrade, right? We're not just using my own experience or Doc's experience, or Jeff Bierman's experience. By the way, Jeff Bierman worked with me at TD Ameritrade for seven and a half years. We're using the collective experience of all of us. There's Tony Rago. By the way, Slim Miller also works here, okay? That's Steve Miller. Um, for those of you that know who that is, fantastic. If you don't, don't worry, you'll meet him because his archives are in here. This is what the, uh, the room looks like, okay? And I wanna show you the archives. There's a Doc archive, a Jeff Bierman, a Slim Miller archive, right? What does a coaching session really look like? Like, what does that kind of come down to? 
the different months all searchable. I'll give you an idea. One of my favorite was back in February, some of the coaching sessions we did using a risk array, controlling Vega risk and building the right trade, tracking extreme options activity. Okay. I challenge you. All right. By the way, somebody said, you guys got slim. We got slim. We got everything Slim's got. We got slim. I've known Steve Miller for since I'm a kid, 22 years old. Seriously. Um, beta waiting. If you name a topic in this business, we have a coaching session for it. And that's where I like to really lay into the industry. I want to change the way that you guys view education. This is not nickel and dime crap. We are here to change it. All right. You go out there, do total Theo. All right. Listen, I want everybody. There's no excuse not to go to the next big short class. You go to the class. It's 197 bucks. Okay. The first time you do a trade, the trade's only going to cost you what? When you actually do a trade, it's going to be $90 to execute the trade. The class alone, okay, could save you tens of thousands of dollars in placing these particular trades. So that's the class and it has the in out spreads course with it. And I stress to you, the in out spreads class alone is worth 197 bucks. I, we listed on the site like 150 bucks. We charged a lot more for that when we did that class. And again, I kind of put my heart and soul into that class. The next big short class though, we have worked for months to come up with a convoluted idea that didn't substantiate huge risk, but still gave us that big burst of downside potential. And for those of you, I mean, if you're ready to take that step, you know, do total Theo. You're not going to be disappointed in what we do for, you know, what, 997? It's an entire year. We even do stuff on the weekends. Uh, we do a Wednesday night options happy hour. Okay. Tonight we're doing this instead of the options happy hour, but typically we do an options happy hour. What is it? You know, two drink minimum. You come out and we have a specific topic. It's not only options. I'll make this clear. We have stock traders. Jeff Bierman is predominantly a stock trader. Tony Rago is exclusively a futures trader. Okay. Then we've got a commodities guy, which is Steve Miller. We've got me. I'm the resident options geek and I'm not a big market technician. So I surround myself with Doc Severson, Jeff Bierman, who are huge into technical analysis. Because I'll tell you right now, I know what my weaknesses are, what some of my strengths are. So surround yourself with people that, well, you know, are better than you in certain areas. And they are just that. So a couple of questions I'm going to try to answer again. Um, Oh, by the way, somebody's bummed. You missed uh, Jeff Bierman discussing Ichimoku. It is one of my personal favorites, but uh, that's archived. It is archived, sir. So uh, by all means, okay. Um, yeah, by the way, Ken asked a question. Uh, the big short class, $197, okay? Absolutely, it's 197 bucks. And I'm telling you right now, if you guys go to the big short class and you check out the in-out spreads class, you're going to love it. Like you seriously will love it. You can, you start watching the class tonight. I mean, literally hit add to cart and you can start watching the in out spreads class tonight. You can't watch the next big short class because that one's next Saturday. By the way, it's next Saturday and it's from 10 to 1 Eastern. I know it's a strange time, but I'm on Pacific time. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona now because, well, I did my years in Chicago and have you been to Chicago weather in February? Have you? I worked in a place that had no windows. Go to work, it's dark. Come home, it's dark. Well, guess what? Here, it's never dark. It's never dark in Scottsdale, but I like to do it early because I have a bunch of kids, a whole bunch of kids. So I got involved in this business at the ripe old age of 22. Um, I just hit the big 4-0 a couple of months ago over there. I'm out of warranty, but obviously you guys know I like this stuff. Okay. I want to stay involved in the education industry, but I couldn't do the brokerage firm anymore. The regulations of the brokerage firm were brutal. Okay. It's good stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> somebody said, remember Scott's uh, castle out in the desert? Um, yeah, of course it is the Chicago connection out there. All right. I'm reading back. Wow. We got a lot of the, uh, a lot of the questions already answered. So one of the primary ones, oh, um, the hours, of the chat room. So on a day-to-day -day basis, if you are curious about this on a day-to-day -day basis, we broadcast, for instance, on a Monday, we start 10 minutes prior to market open, which is 8.20 central time, okay? And we go straight through, okay? We have a, a little bit of a break, but we go from um, about 8.20 central time. The first break we take would be at 9.30. 
Then we come back on for our coaching session at 9.45 Central Time. We go till 10.30. Then at 10.30, we switch from the coaching session to a Jeff Bierman session from 10.30 to 11.30. Okay. Then we take about an hour and a half break. Then we come back at 1 p.m. Central with Tony Rago. All of this, by the way, is detailed on the site. There is a definitive schedule on our site. And then we round out the day with Doc Severson. And there's very little fluctuation to those schedules. So we have in here, so you guys know, all of the shared charts and studies and scans. So if you guys are interested in all the different shares that we do, I told you we give away like free indicators. Here's all the indicators we use. Unusual put options activity, Don's scan, Don's watch list, okay? You want something like the RSI indicator over there, you name it. All of these are links, okay? And if you don't have Thinkorswim, that's okay too, all right? Because we know the code of how to build it for a number of different platforms out there. Now, as I was showing you, there's even, you know, the member event calendar. We're going to do a major event. Don't worry about it. Here it is all the different events that we have, what's coming up, okay? The next big short class with Don Kaufman, it is on the schedule. Whatever does it for you, okay? We're there for it. So, um, <laughs> all right, That's somebody down in Tucson. Hey, guess what? I finished up high school down in Tucson, so I, uh, I resemble that remark. Um, yeah, by the way, William, thank you very much. Uh, again, the risk twist spread. He makes an excellent point. So William came in here and said the risk twist spread would have done spectacular during the Brexit. And he's exactly right. That's the kind of that's the kind of move that you're looking for. Is right around the time of like the Brexit, that thing would have absolutely exploded on there. Okay. By the way, uh, somebody was asking about Doc Severson. No, Doc has officially been with Theo Trade. Um, full time here since March. So we brought Doc on in March. We brought Jeff Bierman on. Jeff Bierman just came on three weeks ago. Jeff Bierman is new. Steve Miller has been in the last two months. Tony Rago has been with us almost since the very beginning over here. Um, so we really do. We got a pretty packed crew uh, here. And, and I'm going to be frank with you. I got a monstrous list of traders, you know, no shortage of traders. Again, I lived and worked in the industry for my entire adult life. And many people don't know this, but I actually grew up around traders. I come from a family of market makers. They actually owned a trading firm and they owned over 500 seats on exchanges around the world. So I literally grew up around traders, never gonna be a shortage of traders out there. And this isn't, you know, this isn't something that, uh, again, comes once in a while. This class is important. Again, I wouldn't spend so much time pushing, you know, theotrade.com forward slash twist if I didn't believe really strongly in this class, the next big short over here. So, all right, I think I got most of the questions answered here. Again, very important, this works in an IRA account. You know, you have to have what's termed like level two clearance in options. As long as you have, okay, a minimal size account, you can execute these strategies. So again, you gotta realize you may only have to do this strategy four times a year for 90 bucks, okay, per clip. Hey, let's say the market tanks once in the next three years. You think that's not gonna be worth it, all right? The profitability is 10, 15, 20, even 100 fold, depending upon the risks out there. So with that, again, all of our support information is listed right here, okay? I'm gonna throw it back up there again support at theotrade.com. That goes to all of us here at Theotrade. Our phone number, 800-256-8876. Additionally, if you need, you can actually chat in directly with us right here. Okay, so you can welcome you live. You can actually chat in over there. Again, Total Theo, the next big short. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Everything is recorded tonight. Have a great evening, everybody, and we'll see you at the class, the next big short. Bye-bye.